regard to borrowing and investment activities for the forthcoming year. The strategy ensures that the Council borrows any required funding within approved limits and is both affordable and sustainable. <coughs> any borrowing undertaken supports the Council's approved capital programme. The strategy also sets the scene for any borrowing required to fund the Council's wholly owned housing company, Gloriana, along with the Council's own new house building schemes within the HRA. Uh, Mr Mayor, this item was debated at uh, Cabinet and this is a Cabinet recommendation. I therefore move recommendation 1.1, 1 .1, uh, A, B, C, D and E. Um, yeah, another increase in the amount of money that our taxpayers um, are going to underwrite uh, to pay for borrowing from the Council. In recommendations, uh, more specifically Part B, where we delegate changes to virtual indicators to Cabinet where changes are required due to the delivery mechanism for affordable homes in the borough as outlined at two, uh, paragraph 216. We're talking about borrowing money for Gloriana. Anything up to £60 million. Pounds. That is roughly <coughs> half of the current general fund borrowing as of this year. I feel that that should not be left to Cabinet members. That should be the decisions made by full council. All of us. We all buy into it or we don't buy into it. And for that, I will ask for that recommendation um, 1B be amended to so, say uh, that delegate changes to financial borrowing, we do not delegate, sorry, we delegate any changes to the financial indicators to Cabinet to be deleted and um, nothing be put in place as it should remain here at the full council. Thank you. As a matter of principle, myself and my colleagues feel that all items delegated to Cabinet should remain to the full council. The Cabinet system provides expediency in certain situations, but it should not be a reason that members are democratically <coughs> disenfranchised. It doesn't matter if it's a financial indicator, it doesn't matter if it's a significant spending decision. Each and every member is elected by the electorate, yes. The electorate also taxpayers. We all have a right to vote on any budgetary measure, not just the members of the Cabinet. And I would say that this is an issue that even if the Conservatives was your main opposition, when we do take control of the Council, we will end that. We will not be seeing mass decisions delegated to the Cabinet because it is not right. The Council is run by 49 democratic elected members because that way we represent the entire borough. The Cabinet at the moment does not represent my constituents in the homesteads because no member of the Cabinet is elected by anyone in the homesteads. Therefore, I should still get a vote. Even if we disagree and I lose the vote, that's democracy. And at times we'll agree. But as a point of principle, we do not want to see any further powers delegated to the Cabinet but it's simply not proper. So, Councillor Kelly and Councillor Holmes said about uh, 1.1b. Um, I think it's a decision that should be made here in full council. There's 49 of us, not just the cabinet. And I think I want to add there, my voice my concern about the, the general feeling of abolishing democracy, democracy throughout a lot of tonight's papers. However, I would like to actually speak something about the report, which is a bit of a, I think, a bit like double standards. During our, our time in office, I think my colleagues over there berated us for conservative spending in the past for using the prudent market investment windfalls in our budget, spouting all kinds of silliness in the press and the chamber. Yet, you're making significant savings here um, when you own your uh, borrowings, but you're simply doing the same thing. You're spending them, but you're not even telling us how you're spending them. It's just being put into the budget envelopes and we don't see anything about it at all. So I think your double standards have to have to stop. Tell us what's going on with this money or agree that both were right in dissent. Thank you very much. All agreed sets out the rules, <coughs> sets out uh, the delegations that are appropriate to Cabinet. We have all accepted that. Uh, as far as uh, the prudential indicators are concerned, especially in respect to Gloriana, uh, I would just remind everybody that there is a group that consists of uh, <coughs> the leaders of the three uh, largest groups that, in, in essence, form the governance for Gloriana. Without the agreement of those members, uh, the borrowing can't actually be increased. So I think it is utterly spurious 
else uh, to say that Cabinet can uh, just do it on its own. Uh, and I have to say that were we to look to borrow anything approaching the figures that have been mentioned, uh, we would of course uh, think it prudent to come back to, to Council first. I would also again just have to remind everybody uh, that there is the ability to call in any decision of Cabinet, there is the ability to go and ask questions at Cabinet. Uh, it is just so sad that it is so rare that Conservative members take the opportunity to do that, Mr Mayor. Councillor Kempis, any other councillors wish to speak? Let's be quite frank and honest. Asking a question at Cabinet has very little effect. We can go there, ask a question, ask a supplementary, get either accurate or flippant or party political uh, based answers, and that's where we are. We can have a call in, as Councillor Kent said. But of course, with the chairs of Overview Scrutiny being the uh, administration's chairs, um, most things that go to open scrutiny just get rejected, goes back to Cabinet, the decision remains as is. By putting it here in front of full council means that we all get that chance to say yay or nay. We all get to understand exactly what the risks are. We all get to understand how much money our residents will have to underwrite for how long. And that's why I will stick to this um, and have that um, Recommendation removed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gladys. No. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't going to speak on this, but I'm just sitting here absolutely flabbergasted that we've got to this stage, and then for people to say, "Oh, and what about Gloriana? Who's been going to these meetings? This is such a fabulous project for us to be doing this. This is." Other councils are doing it, yet you just don't want to do it. I've been in scrutiny where I had a councillor sit there and go, why would you want to build houses in Tilbury? Nobody wants to live in Tilbury. Well, actually, <laughs> lots of people want to live in Tilbury. <coughs> Gloriana has got sites that are already agreed through planning. It's already been to planning. Nothing happened at planning. We've had all of the finances. Those on the committee have gone through the finances. Everybody's agreed. Yet at the moment now we've come to our moment of glory. Oh, let's call in Gloriana. I absolutely can't believe that we're saying that those have to be come back here for every decision when already through the constitution there's a working group that's cross party that works on Gloriana. And I just can't believe that we would even think about going backwards on such a great project. The portfolio holder is missing the point. The point isn't objecting to Gloriana. The council does need a build. There's a massive set of pe people and a waiting <coughs> list. The council does need to build. It's the financial control, the responsibility of the financial control that is under uh, question here. What we're seeing is that instead of eight, seven, eight, and ten and the Nobel cabinet members making that decision, that decision should come and rest on all of us. That's what. That's the clarity we're trying to say. Sixty million pounds of taxpayers' money on Thorock is a lot of money. It's more, it's more than 50% actually, that of, of what we're collecting in council tax. And we're just saying, instead of delegating that to cabinet, we should all take that responsibility. That's the <coughs> issue at stake. So the sentiment about Floriana, we all appreciate that. But let's just talk about the finances and bring that back to this house. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Sarah. The issue. The issue is not whether you're for or against Gloriana or any initiative. The issue is how that power is exercised. You mentioned overview and scrutiny. The cabinet can ignore overview and scrutiny. You can. Oh, you yeah, know, well, that's very interesting. I remember when I was a committee chair, <coughs> I put things through my committee and the cabinet could ignore it. You, it is not about the process. It's not about saying, oh, we don't. We're in a good mood today. It is about the legal power and how that legal power and how money is actually exercised in the Constitution. Open scrutiny has no power to bind the Cabinet. Working groups have no power to bind the Cabinet. It's not about Gloriana. It is about every single issue. Money, our taxpayers, our constituents' voices, nothing should be exercised by a group that can ignore other democratic bodies that it sets up. That is wrong, surely you can see that. And for the first part of Gloriana, Councillor Gretchen was actually on the committee, didn't attend. The only opposition member that attended was Councillor Little, who did actually attend the meetings. 
going through when I was the cabinet member for it, we made it very clear that we wanted this to be cross-party because it's for the benefit of everybody in Thurrock, which is why the three leaders of the party were on the Constitution Working Party. If they don't agree, it can't go forward. So they can't have it on one hand and then try and back the responsibility back. So let's just get a grip and let's just carry on and doing what we do. You have your opportunity with Gloriana, so don't try and gain some press by saying it, it's actually restricted just to cabinet. You have your voice, use it. On the amendments, the motion. Uh, is it the discussion? I think it's actually 63 million. I think it's nearly 63 million. I'll be discussing uh, uh, a change to every spend or just the initial spend. What we are following. We've heard tonight cross party this, cross party that, people pick the 10, people have got the ability to stop this or stop that. What could be more cross party than having the credential indicators and the ability to say yes or no to borrowing heard in this chamber? It couldn't be more cross party if it was if it was heard in this chamber. So this is not about Goriana not getting money. This is not about people not wanting to live in Silbury. And whoever said that, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly disgusted. I lived in Silbury for a good number of years. My family still live in Silbury. And I'm proud to live in Silbury. But it's not about that. It's about how we borrow money and should we borrow it or shouldn't we borrow it and what the risks are. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bertil. With your permission,